words from today's gospel. Et amplius amplius, edel amplius, admirabantora dicentes bene omnia fecit. And so in the more do they wonder, saying, He has done all things well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. When the Jews in today's gospel saw their Lord perform this great miracle that was done upon the man deaf and dumb, they exclaimed, He has done all things well. Bene omnia fecit. The problem is that the Jews idolized the Lord because of this miracle, this external work that he performed. And they failed to see that, obviously, this man who called himself the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, was a man to be idolized not only because of his external works, but also because of his virtues. And I think like the Jews of our Lord's time, we can fall into the same error or same trap when we consider celebrities, whether they be actors or a fam uh, favorite football rugby star or some uh, music artists. All these people, these wonderful people, they excel in their respective professions, but what they achieve, and what they achieve is as admirable, what they achieve is at the top level of the, of the game, so to speak. Um, but there's not a balanced view, really, at the person. He's a rugby star, yeah, but what is he like as a person? What is he like um, behind in his private life? So what makes a person great is not the actions, or not rather the, the profession, what they excel at, the, the prowess of the expertise. What makes a person great is the virtue, and it's, it's really it's the external works as well as the internal works, such as their virtues. And that's something that really makes a role model, a person, that sh someone to be looked upon as someone who is an exemplary citizen or exemplary person of the faith. This mentality of idolizing celebrities and the Jews in today's gospel um, has an effect on the way we approach the lives of the saints. Because when we read the lives of the saints, we, we read about the miracles. Uh, we read about St. Jerry Bajella walking in water. We read about uh, Padre Pio reading hearts, and we read about St. Joseph Cappuccino flying in the air. These are very extraordinary um, miracles. And I think we tend to focus on these miracles and not really on the eternal works or their, their private lives. And it rubs off on us when we consider this, because we think to become holy, to seek for sanctity, is to perform miracles. But in fact, to become holy is to do the will of God. So what happens is that we, as a consequence of focusing on the external works or miracles of these great saints, we consequently despise the little things that the saints did. We despise that the day-to-day -day life that they lived. So our Lord did all things well, and it's true. And the key is to, uh, how, how do we, how we investigate, how did our Lord do all things well? Uh, and it comes up time and time again in the Gospels where, uh, where our Lord says, I'm here to do my Father's business. I'm here to do the will of the Father. He says this and repeats this constantly over and over again. So our Lord, you can say, our Lord shows us at least in a, a way to become holy is to do the will of the Father. So St. Alphonsus wrote a book, and you're probably all aware of this book, called Conformity or Uniformity to the Will of God. And this book can be summed up in this sentence, to become holy, to seek perfection, to seek sanctity, is to do the holy will of God. And in this same work, St. Alphonsus really hammers the point home when he says, quote, Some place sanctity in the works of penance, others in frequent communion, others in reciting many vocal prayers, but no, for St. Thomas, he says that perfection consists not in these things, but in submission to the divine will. When we become Catholics, and as, as practicing Catholics, we, we tend to want to, yes, of course, do modifications, practice penances, um, uh, commun commune frequently, and we recite many vocal prayers, but sometimes we can place an emphasis on that and not rather on is this 
according to the will of God is is going to communion is great is good obviously doing penance is a fantastic work uh, and and doing many vocal prayers but what Saint Francis is pointing out here is that if you do this in unity or in conformity to the will of God then that is meritorious so the question is what the the question is, what, how do we do the will of God? How, is it, how, is it, how do we go about finding out what the will of God is for us? And so, what, so God imposes upon all of us by circumstance and, and by our state of life, um, our, our, our will, of, will of God for us. So whether you're a religious priest or a, a sister or a brother, or you're married or single, you're all in a state of life. And in, according to your state of life, you have to save your soul according to whether you're a religious priest or a nun or brother or married or single. So all these states of life determine to us that if, I, um, if I'm a priest and I have to pray my prayers, I have to say my mass, I have to follow the rule. These things are the things that make me holy because I'm doing them according to the will of God. And to illustrate this point, I'd like to mention to you a... I present to you rather a story, or rather the life of Saint, or a little bit exact excerpt of Saint John Berkman, and he was a Jesuit student. He was only 22 when he died. He, he was born in 1599. He died in 1621. Born in Belgium and died in Rome as a student at the age of 22. So, Saint John Berkman, among his peers, was um, popular and also really holy because he had this great devotion to the rule. So he would, as a student, wake up, meditation, mass, and study, then do a bit of work, and more study, and reading, and sleep. And that was his whole day, didn't day in, day out. Obviously, he had office as well that they would pray. But when you look at his life, there was nothing extraordinary about it. He wasn't flying in the air, nor was he performing great miracles, multiplying loaves of bread. He lived his life day in, day out, as a student dedicated to his vocation. The will of God for him was to be a student and to study, work, and pray. There's an incident in his life which demonstrates that this point about the will of God being sanctification. So he was at recreation with his confreres and then playing billiards. And so one of his confreres asked him, what would you do, John, if God called you at this moment? What would you do if God said you have a few minutes to live? So St. Saint, Saint John Berkman had the, the cue in his hand and he thought about it and, and said, replied to him and said, I will keep on playing billiards. And the reason, and obviously the obvious reason, is that he will keep on doing the will of God. And that's precisely the point, that he, St. John Berkman, was a, a great example of living the day-to-day -day affairs and becoming holy through that by living out his vocation and doing the holy will of God. St. Therese of the Little Flower confirms the great value of the day-to-day -day actions and sacrifices when she said, quote, I prefer the monotony of obscure sacrifices to ecstasies. To pick up a pen for love can convert a soul. So what St. Therese is telling us is that she prefers the obscure sacrifices of following the rule. She, as a Carmelite nun, had, had to pray and sing office every day. She had recreation and, and other prayers, other penances that to, um, to perform. But she preferred that to the great ecstasies that she received from our Lord. So the rationale behind that is that she would prefer to live out the day-to-day -day life as a nun rather than to be in ecstasy. She would prefer to give to God by living a day-to-day -day life rather than to receive from God a gift of being in ecstasy. And she goes on to say that to pick up a pin for love can convert the soul. This implies that a simple and even mundane action as picking up a pin, if you do it for the love of God and in union with God, and if, if it's according to God's will, then that action can convert a soul. That action can have redemptive and salvific effects on souls. So what does this mean for us? For, for men who are married, or even single men who are married, a married father who goes to work, going to work and doing the work is, and if you do that in, according to the, the will of God, is redemptive and salvific. For a mother who's at home educating and cooking and cleaning, that can make her holy and that brings sanctity 
if it's in union with the, the will of God. For children who are to you know, obey their parents, to do their work and chores diligently, they can be holy by doing this in accordance to God's will, obviously through the will of their parents as well. So you can see that holiness comes from the day-to-day -day affairs, the day in, day out, the monotony of life, of, you know, as a, as a child you, you have to obey your parents, you have to do your schoolwork, you have to do your chores. As a mother, you, you provide for your family, you cook, you clean, and as a husband, you provide for the family. Even as a single person, you have obligation to, to do your prayers, to support your families and your friends and those around you and your community as well. So all these things, are, are what may seem insignificant and small, actually attribute and contribute to our salvation. When one thinks of our Lord in Nazareth, collecting wood, helping St. Joseph, he did this for 30 years. And when you compare 30 years of our Lord's private life, a life of, of virtue, a life living with St. Joseph and Our Lady, compared to three years of his public life, it's true, our Lord had to preach these three years. It was important because he needed to, obviously, preach the kingdom of God. But it was also imperative that he preached, he preached by his hidden life for 30 years, by living the day-to-day -day affairs, and by doing so, sanctified the day-to-day -day and mundane actions of our life. So, the Lord lived a life of virtue in the run-of-the-mill way. So, for us to sanctify the run-of-the-mill mundane actions for us as well. And this reveals and demonstrates a very powerful lesson for us, and so when we think about um, when we're at work or when, as a child, you have to study or do your chores, think about the way that the Lord actually worked uh, and, and things He did to sanctify our actions. So we ought to be in a state of wonder at the life of our Lord and the, good, and the things that He did from the simple, He did 30 years of living a simple life, to the miraculous works He worked through His public life. All these things, he, all the things he did, is a lesson to us, um, and really the message today, the, the takeaway home message today, is to is to realize that sanctity is not beyond our reach. Sanctity is there actually in the everyday actions, as long as we sanctify it and do it according to God's will. So we can become saints, and it's not, believe it or not, in the extraordinary miracles. It is in the everyday, day-to-day -day grind of sanctifying our day according to the will of God. So let us ask the Lady for the graces to remain faithful to the circumstances of our life, that we may be, be faithful to our vocation, so that it may be said of us when we die, like our Lord, we've done all things well. God bless you, and the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>